Now, what is going on, guys? Today, we want to talk about OAuth 2 pushed authorization requests, which is a very interesting extension. Yeah, we're trying to improve the overall security of our OAuth flow. So let's just see what uh, we're trying to do here and why this overall thing is useful. So let's say I'm logged into this uh, diagrams.net application and I want to save this file in my Google Drive. In order to do so, I need to sign in with my Google account and therefore I am using OAuth and OpenID Connect. And the way this works is, so right now I'm logged in, but if I were not logged in, then there would be this button. I would click this button and then I would get redirected to the authorization server. Yeah, so this is the authorization code grant because I'm a natural person, I'm a human. And that's why we have the uh, authorization code grant here. And the issue here is that we are passing a lot of parameters here in the URL bar in the front channel directly. And this can be yeah, somewhat an issue. Yeah, so in general, there's like no integrity and authenticity protection. Yeah, so we do not have any uh, yeah, signatures or whatever. Like we're just putting this in the browser's bar and we are hoping for the best. And also bear in mind that the code here runs in the browser. So that means if there's like some issue with the browser and somebody manages to intercept the call to the server right before it gets encrypted, well, then I can see like where you're making requests or I can maybe look at the browser's history, right? So the user agent itself is also not perfect. And of course, another thing is that these URLs can become pretty large and that can be an issue on mobile devices. Yeah, so we want to improve the, the security over here. And the fundamental principle of pushed authorization requests is actually pretty simple. So what we do is instead of putting the parameters in the URL and just redirecting like directly, what we do is we just make one additional call to mitigate this issue. Yeah, so instead of directly going to the authorization server, we make a post request or we make a request to our backend. We just imagine like this uh, thing has a backend. Yeah, so this example is for confidential clients. Um, and let's say like this thing has a backend and now we make a request there and then our backend makes a request to a new endpoint which is called pushed authorization request endpoint. And what we do is essentially here we are sending the parameters we have sent before in the browser's uh, bar. We just send it like through our backend. Yeah, so we make a post request and we send the exact same thing like before. Okay, we send the redirect URL, response type, client ID, some state, maybe some pixie values to this endpoint. And what we get back is we get back a URI. Um, for this particular authorization request that uniquely identifies yeah, the authorization request we just did. The advantage of this is that between our backend and between the OAuth server, we can obviously have a very strong authentication. In the basic or in the most basic case, actually, we have a client ID and a client secret. But in principle, we could also use like mutual TLS, for example, that would be quite strong and that would already improve like the overall security. Yeah, so overall this, this additional step makes sure that we do not have to pass this information in the browser's bar, but that we just pass it over our backend. And the nice thing here is that we can detect malicious behavior up front because right now in order to make this pushed authorization request, we have to authenticate ourselves. And if we do not have, or if the attacker doesn't have proper credentials, which he does not, then he cannot even start like such an OAuth flow. And this is a very big advantage, actually. The idea is now that we get back like some request URI. So URI that represents this authorization request. And then when we go back here to our browser, and then only then we redirect to the authorization server. And what we do is we just send this request URI that we just received. Yeah, so you see that from the red arrow here. So this request URI just gets in the browser's bar, in the search bar. And this of course then creates a GET request. Yeah, so we're making a GET request to the authorization server. So this is like the normal OAuth flow. But instead of passing the parameters in this URL directly, we just pass the reference to it. Well, okay, and then what happens next is that the 
authorization server says, ah, okay, cool, like there's this request URI. I'm going to look up in my database where I have stored this particular authorization request. And then it sees, ah, okay, I know this request, um, it's from the right client and so on. So this is fine. So now I have all the information that I need. So I can just resume the normal behavior and um, just continue with the normal OAuth flow. And then what you get is you get like this normal dialog here. Do you want to allow this application to access, to connect to Google Drive and so on? And if you click yes, uh, then the flow just resumes as usual. So the bottom line is we have one additional step here. Uh, and this is also why this whole thing is called pushed authorization requests. Yeah, so instead of putting it in the in the browser's uh, search bar, which is pushing the information up front to new endpoint, and then we get a reference back, and then we just use like that particular reference. You might recall that we did like a very similar video previously with these JOT secured authorization requests, also known as JARs. This is actually also supported in this uh, new specification. So the bottom line here is that you can actually have additional security by signing or by putting like the initial request payload inside of a JSON Web Signature token. And then you can even encrypt that on top of that again. Okay, so the, the concept that we introduced in this JOT secured authorization request, so the fact that we take all the parameters and sign them and then encrypt them again. This is actually also supported by this endpoint. I think this is a very good solution because what it does is it offloads all the work essentially to the authorization server. And the authorization server can say, okay, look, you can either only use the normal authentication we have that is configured for you. So for example, with client ID, client secret, or mutual TLS. And th if this is still not good enough and you're like super into security and so on, you can even sign the initial uh, requests and you can even encrypt it if you want. So then you have even application level security. And I think this overall concept here is like really nice because if you recall in the initial RSC with the uh, jars, the idea was that, okay, you just push this assigned authorization request somewhere on your server and then the authorization server is going to fetch it from you and then proceed. And yeah, that's a bit awkward because for one, I don't want to build that myself. It's the first thing. And the second thing is what happens if something goes wrong? Yeah, What happens if my server is down? All of this is just like a bit difficult. What happens if I have already deleted that particular request? Yeah, so this is like more complicated. So it makes much more sense that the authorization server is actually doing like the work. And that is essentially just the idea of pushed authorization requests. So we introduce one extra step. We push the initial parameters with an additional request to the pushed authorization endpoint. And uh, then we get back a reference and then we use that reference and the normal flow continues as before. And then we can even have application level security here if we want to. And we can have a better security for the initial call, which prevents evil hackers <laughs> from even initializing an OAuth grant. Yeah, so that is pretty much the pushed authorization request extensions. I think honestly that nobody is going to do the uh, JOT secured authorization requests by themselves, yeah. So writing your own backend and then allowing the authorization server to fetch it, fetch it, that's too complicated. I think everyone is just going to use this particular idea where you have one endpoint on top and then the authorization server is taking care of everything. Yeah, so pretty interesting thing. Um, I think this is going to get some traction because it has much better security. And yeah, that's it pretty much for this video. So thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. This is actually a video as part of a whole series of OAuth videos where we take a look at all the RFCs and how they work and where I try to explain them in a, in a visual and easy to understand way. So if you like that video, then I would be happy to see you around in the future. And uh, yeah, I wish you a really nice day and uh, see you around. Bye bye.